blisters. Are they annoying? <coughs> They're annoying for us because we end up wasting truckloads of this stuff and then also we end up putting up with a hell of a lot of whinging <laughs> at any level. So what we're going to do is show you something that's really, really, and this is going to be my nerdy side coming out <coughs> and yours. <laughs> I'm going to show you something that's really cool, but the proviso is this is a preventative. It's not once you get the blister. This is to stop the blisters from occurring in the first place. All right? Now, while Shanks gets himself set up, we came across this through Victor at the start of pre-season, just gone. And like a lot of clubs, you imagine training in the heat, five, six times a week outside, blisters were an issue for us. Safe to say, between this and one other little product, which may or may not have there, we cut our rate of blisters down by, for guys who did it, the guys who didn't do it, put new boots on and went around outside, well, more full then, because they were told not to do that first. We still got a few, but I reckon we had about, I don't know, we would have cut it by about 85% in terms of the occurrence. So, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, two times range is a basically an anti blister, anti chafing product range, and there's also a um, an antibacterial product within the range too, which I'll briefly touch on. In simplistic terms, and we know we've had it recently, like, again, one of our other clubs who, who don't like to talk too much about what we they do. Like <laughs> hey? We don't like them either. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. They don't like it. Um, so in essence, what happens in particular over pre-season, the amount of downtime that coaches, and I know your coach particularly hates players missing training in any periods of training for blisters and or chafing, and both of those injuries can be excruciatingly painful. So obviously curative medicine is better, a whole lot better, than, and preventative medicine is a whole lot better than curative medicine. So this is basically a Teflon-based powder, and the magic of it is hopefully you can all see I've just sprinkled a very little bit of that on my hands and I'll show you how it works. So in essence, I don't know some of the, I don't know how the Richmond players, some will literally do it that way and just rub it into their palm. I've, we supply the Australian Open Tennis Championships with this product and I have seen some of the international players get that thing and they just sprinkle the bugger out of it into their, into their socks. You can imagine how blistering is a real just, issue for them. Just on that, some of us do it like that and some of our guys actually get a small bin and sit on a stool in the trainer's room and just cover their foot in and rub it all in too. Yeah. So, in essence, what you want to do is get coverage with the powder. So hopefully most of you can see the magic of... Um, I'll let, me to, let, let me just say one thing beforehand. Blisters occur for two main reasons. And uh, does anyone know how blisters occur and the reason behind them? So there's two, there's two components to blistering that you want to, you want to, you want to try and prevent them interacting. And that's basically friction and moisture. So the minute you've got friction and moisture, you've got blistering. <laughs> so in essence, what you want to try and do is prevent friction and, friction and moisture from interacting. So what we're doing here is you're always going to have friction in a footy boot because you've got plenty of pivotal work, etc., uh, etc., et and you're always going to have moisture. So what we're trying to achieve here is preventing moisture from penetrating the skin. Now I don't know how many of you can see it, but if, 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 for those of you that wax cars, imagine the sweat. So Teflon, you all you all understand that Teflon is basically an end stick component. So no, that's pre. We don't do it. Once you've got them, it's no good. So you can see there, there's just it literally just beads. The moisture just beads on top of the actual. So that's preventing that's what we call the moisture interacting with the friction. So, stop that so in simplistic terms, what you want to do is if you're aware of players at any point in time in the area, it could be any time, if they've bought new boots, anything like that, susceptible or prone areas to blistering, just get a bit of the, um, the two times blister, blister shield, rub it in and it won't occur. So the other component to, to moisture and friction injury is chafing and for those of you that have ever had any chafe injury, and I have seen it a lot, particularly now with modern day materials and what they're, you know, what they're manufacturing um, athletic clothing out of. There's a lot of nylons used and, and, and products like that, which can often uh, 
um, rub quite fiercely against the skin. Triathlete would know what I'm talking about here. Um, and football jumpers too in this modern era. Um, I know for a fact that nipple chafing is a massive issue, not necessarily just for women, believe it or not, but a lot of blokes suffer horribly. And I've seen some pretty ordinary open skin um, chafing scenarios, inner thigh areas and various other areas. So this is a product called a surfactant, which basically this is a roll-on or comes in a sachet form. So I'll do it on top of my hand so you can see again. Similar <coughs> scenario to, to when you wash your car, when you wax your car and you don't want that moisture interacting. This will literally just bead off. So you can see there literally there's beads of water just stuck on the top of that. And that will prevent, it will prevent any chafe injury whatsoever. So if all your players are wearing undershorts, which they all do now, like compression shorts, whatever they want to call them, a lot of it is still causing some um, chafe injury down there. You'll find chafe injury in the nipple area. So I'd strongly suggest yeah. that. Just, just on that one, we the roll on product. we came across that at the same time as the Blister Shield one. And uh, where one of our guys would religiously wear the long skins shorts to stop chafing. Um, I gave him that to try. Now, obviously, in the roll on, you're not going to share that amongst your team, so you want to get that for individuals. But if you want to try it with your team, then get the little, they come in a pack of five, five, yeah, yeah. Uh, ten. Ten, ten, pack of ten, a little towelette, kind of like the old KFC towelette, but just a bit similar. Um, gave that to him to use. He hasn't worn skins the last 12 months because he hasn't chafed through the middle of summer when it's been wet, when we've been playing. He just whacks it on before training and playing. And he's got his roll on, job done. See you later. And he hasn't had to reapply it. So, how's it going in a wetsuit? Under a wetsuit? Yeah. Really, really. So, we've got a lot of surfers that use the product now too. And the joy of it is that really it will last basically until you wash it off with soap and warm water. So it's both of those products will last quite a significant amount of time, so. Salt water? Um, yeah, yeah, no problems, no problems. Go and um, have a look at Sport, Google Sport Shield, and there's a hell of a lot of international surfers that actually say they use um, it. And we get a test of that, because our processing camp was in North Queensland again in January, and we were doing a hell of a lot of stuff on the beach, and in and out, and what have you, and took extra for that reason, because we knew we'd cop it, as we did 12 months before, and didn't have an issue. The guys who used it was, so the other, the only other thing, as I said, is antibacterial. For those of you that work in footy clubs or any sort of clubs, gymnasiums, anywhere, you walk into a change room and you can smell the bacteria. I don't care what anyone says, you can smell it. So that off smell that you're smelling is nothing other than bacteria. And there are plenty of disinfectants and masking agents and whatnot around. <coughs> this is actually based on it uses again a surfactant which actually kills the bacteria. So it's completely, there's basically no odour to this at all. So if you've got, uh, if you're at a, a sporting club where you're using a lot of gym equipment, boxing stuff, things like that, spray it with this, um, tables. We, at our footy club, we actually get all the players to spray their bags, boots, etc. So that we try and limit that pretty ordinary smell that reeks throughout, uh, reeks throughout. We spray our tables down with it after every, basically after uh, every use. So. It is a quality product um, and it will, it will kill the bacteria, it will kill it. So you're not looking for a really nice lavender smell or anything, you're looking to kill that bacterial smell and that's what that will do for you. So it's a nice simple little range of product that's worth considering. We'll talk a little bit about SOS. So um, rehydration is obviously an issue. You've all heard of Hydrolyte I assume and you've all heard of Gatorade and Powerade and all that. So Gatorade and Powerade are sugar and plenty of it. So if you're feeding that to your playing group, you're not doing them a whole big favour really, in essence, in terms of rehydrating them anyway. Um, Hydrolyte's a quality product in the marketplace. SOS is doctor designed, doctor um, manufactured, and it's recognised by World Sports, uh, I can't remember their name, World Sports something or other. It is it provides a higher level of magnesium, potassium, basically salt replacement than even your hydrolyte does. It is in sachet form at the moment. There are four flavours. It has less sugar than all the others. So what we found particularly is this, this has been selling well for us even into um, junior sport areas where kids finish sport, they want to drink. You don't want to feed them with sugar. Um, Gatorades, Powerades, soft drinks, etc. full of sugar. 
literally one of those sachets for a child into a 300 to 500 ml bottle of water will be perfect hydration replacement. We have got a number of elite sports, the Wallabies are now using SOS for their rehydration program. Uh, we're now supplying the World Rugby Sevens, so all the Sevens teams throughout. Uh, the, so they go into tournaments where they're playing perhaps five, six games over a period of two to three days, a lot of those internationals, and they're now using SOS. So um, I know Pete's got a fair bit of it on the shelf here. Uh, it comes in different formats. You can buy it in bulk, you can buy it in five packs, ten packs. Relatively inexpensive. Ranges from about $1.50 to $2 a sachet. And it's, it is a quality product for rehydration. So keep that in mind. You've all got a sample pack there too, which is worth having a play with. If you've got any questions about any of this, you can always contact me through Pete as well about any of these products. We're going to sort of try and belt through as much as we can so that you guys get a feel for some of the new stuff in the marketplace. Yeah, I'm just going to roll on this one now. Uh, scissors. Well, this is your boat. Behind me. So there, that's why we're doing this. <coughs> right, yeah, this one's called Bandle. And I hope we're not sounding like a $2 road show right now. <laughs> can't be that way. Because we can't be that way. But the, the reason that I am quite keen for Andrew to speak about this tonight and also talk to you guys about it is because it's all stuff that we're using. It's all stuff that's really, really good for a whole range of reasons. This stuff here, Bandle, it's highly absorbent. So you get those little nicks on the field and cuts and what have you, you can wrap it up. The wallabies actually fold in half, don't they? Oh, they do. Oh, you can go into the You can go into Anyway, we use it for a whole range of stuff, whether it's a little bit of compression, whether it's on, I use it for compression on fingers, when they injure a finger. It's really easy, because what it does is it just self-adherent, so it just wraps to itself. And it's done. And the only way it comes off is to roll it back on itself. You can't get it off, like it doesn't peel away. It um, won't unravel back off it. Once it's nah. adhered to itself, it won't unravel. But we found it really beneficial for two things. One, like I said, injured fingers, and you want to get something on there quick from a compression point of view. And the players that we've used it with have said, yeah, that feels as good, if not better, as any other compression bandage that we might have used in the past. Um, the difference is with this, they seem to feel like they've still got ball grip as opposed to the other bandages. The other one is with toes. So we spoke about blisters and what have you, and preventing them, but if you do get them, wrap a bit of that around the toe and cover it in, it sticks to itself, and it doesn't rub on the next toe like a bit of thumb tape or other tape would. So we found that to be really handy for us as well. So some of the applications, we know the Wallabies use a fair bit of this and appreciate that in the rugby codes there's a fair bit of blood spill as there is in AFL coding, but you can't, you basically can't get this wrong. So it doesn't matter how you use it, play with it or whatever. So let's say you've got a nick over the eye and some of the, over the eye, maybe the chin, um, you can get blood spill areas on the head which are awfully hard to work with and often you get players coming out looking like mummies, they're extremely uncomfortable, it looks pretty untidy, etc, etc. This, you can't get wrong, so I could literally fold that over and it's not neat, it doesn't need to be neat or anything, but in terms of, let's say, blocking up a, or closing up a, a nick over the eye, it literally is as simple as wrapping that on, it will adhere to itself, it's quite absorbent, it's extremely compressive, so it will actually slow the bleeding down, as well as absorb the bleeding. You might whack a little bit of rigid tape just across there to keep it in tight, but that's pretty much it. So you'll see a lot of the... I know the, the Wallabies use an electrical tape over the top because they use that to keep their ears um, plugged in anyway. But you can see that, that that's, you know, even, even in terms of chin cut or anything like that, it's fairly pliable, malleable and workable in any area. So um, finger splinting, if you want to splint two fingers, you want to splint two toes to get rid of a lot of podiatrists that don't use anything but this. And you can literally fold it over into three, four, whatever. So you can't get it wrong. It's highly absorbent, highly compressive. To, in essence, we're still learning. This has only been in the marketplace for about 18 months, and we're still learning from all our pro teams the different applications for it. Um, so there again, is the hair is, you know, they bleed from underneath the hair. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. If you whack it straight yeah. over, well, it's first of all it's not going to rip the hair out because there's no adhesive to it. Whack it straight over, it'll compress down. So obviously, you want compression, and it'll absorb the bleeding as well. So. Um, yeah, there's, there's, it's, its application is, is pretty much 
not unlimited, but in terms of compression and and um, absorbency, it's there's not really a, there's nothing like this in the world. So um, you want to sell some of that stuff to Joel Selwood? Uh, it needs well, a bit more than tight. Interesting you say that because <laughs> Joel Selwood's an interesting cat when it comes to commercial activity, anyway. So Joel Selwood, oh, Geelong have used this because the physios are on their mind, but uh, in terms of Joel Selwood, he, he probably costs a little bit too much in terms of commercial activity. So, but, um, okay, we won't go into that. Yeah. Um, so there are there are a whole range of products that. that yeah, under the sports medicine umbrella, if you're looking for something, you can generally find it. You can come down and speak to Pete and the guys here about the products that you might be looking for. There's a whole range. Of, our, our range of tape is the widest range of tape available in the Australian marketplace. So you won't miss out on anything that you're looking for, in essence. Um, like Matt said, there's K tapes or Kinesio tapes, and there's a wide variance of other products available that we, you know, obviously we're not. Often I can literally bring the roll in a semi-trailer full of different products. But in essence, I guess what we want to say to you guys is from a Victor Sports perspective, perspective and working with the local distributor down here, we're really keen to introduce you guys to some of the stuff that's used at the upper levels. And Matt and I have done these sorts of presentations all over the state. So important for us is that is that at grassroots level, we introduce you to what's being used at the highest level too, so that you're not being left behind and you have access to, to you know, the products that actually work at that level as well. And they're not expensive, they're functional, they're sound, and they do a job for you. And um, the last piece of on sale, because Pete mentioned this to me just before as we were walking around, said that the 38 mil rigid, is that correct, Pete? You've got your special on. So because you guys have come here tonight, now if you go to the chemist tomorrow, and try and buy a roll in another brand that shall not be named because it wouldn't be fair to do that. You're probably looking at 17, 18, 20 dollars a roll. Has anyone bought it from Chemist before? Yeah, 16, 17 bucks a roll. Pete's got a special on for you guys, which I think is ongoing for a little while, isn't it, Pete? That per roll, if you want to just buy a few rolls of this 38 mil rigid to go and practice with from tonight, obviously you've got some in your seat, or to use your clubs, it's 10 bucks a roll. Which is probably cheaper than you sell for us for, mate, to be honest. But anyway, um, it's a really good deal. <laughs> it's a really good deal. And if you want to get some, obviously, people will sort you out with that. Um, any other questions for me on the night? Yeah. Quick is not the answer, unfortunately. Um, shin splints is a terrible term. Okay. Like really great Tommy shin splints because it's not really a, it's a term that's used a lot, but it's not really true in a sense. Um, in answer to your question in short, and you're not going to like this, probably not, because you could probably spend 20 minutes talking about it, 20 minutes demonstrating taping if the taping even works. Okay. Um, what don't you like about the shin splints? It's not a great term because it doesn't really describe what's going on, is, is my issue with it, but that's a personal thing. So, obviously, we have a personal opinion about a shin split, but does taping assist in whatever it is, obviously not what we're calling it? Yeah, but not of the shin. Correct. Yeah, 